We're going to bring in Kelsey Yarzov. She's a student at the George Washington University here in Washington. She has a question for Senator Cruz. Kelsey. Senator Cruz, I come from a middle-class family, and I worked hard in high school to get into a competitive college. But even after academic scholarships, my parents and I are still struggling to afford my education, and that's without indirect costs. So it's hard then for families like mine to see the benefits of cutting corporate tax rates and reattempting trickle-down economics when that hasn't been a long-term solution for the middle class in the past. How would you justify cutting the corporate tax rate by 15% but only barely making a dent in the tax rate for middle class Americans? Kelsey, thank you, thank you for your question and, and uh, congratulations on your studies. Look, I, I, understand, I understand the frustration. And you know what, there are a lot of young people who feel frustrated. You've probably got student loans. I know when I was in college, I had about 100 grand in student loans. And, and didn't, wasn't sure how to pay for them because my parents had declared bankruptcy when I was in high school. So I understand that's hard. You, you ask why cut the corporate taxes for a young person, I'll give you the single best reason. Because when you graduate, you want a job. Do you know the United States has the highest corporate tax rate of any developed country in the world? You look at countries all over Europe, you look at Ireland, you look at the United Kingdom, you look at France, they're cutting their tax rates. And what's happening is jobs are fleeing to those countries. Capital goes where it gets the right tax rate. And Bernie's solution is jack the taxes up even more. If you jack the taxes up even more, we've already got the highest corporate tax rates in the developed world. You'll see even more companies leaving, even more jobs leaving. And the frustration young people feel is you're coming out of school and you don't have opportunity. You know, Bernie talked a minute ago about the, the gap between rich and poor. He's right. It's growing. But it's grown dramatically under Barack Obama. Do you know that right now the top 1% have a higher share of our national income than any, any year since 1928? Uh, if you look at... Uh, an, an article called The Greatest Wealth Transfer in History by Justin Gardner, New York Post editor, called the period between 2008 and 2015 the Great Fleecing. Those are the Obama years, because what happened? What happened is $4.5 trillion in wealth was accumulated in Wall Street, and that was with high Obama taxes, high Obama regulation, all the cronyism and favoritism of Washington, and the people that got hurt, the gap between rich and poor, widened more under Obama than under any other president. What I want to see is young people coming out with opportunity, and the way you have opportunity is to have two, three, four, five job offers. When you cut taxes on small businesses and job creators, the result is everyone benefits because you have more opportunity, better jobs, and higher wages. Senator Sanders? Well, for a start, uh, I commiserate with you uh, as a student struggling. And what you should know is that in order to give incredible tax breaks to the 1%, uh, the Republican budget that we're debating right now would slash Pell Grant funding. funding. Uh, Pell Grants are the major source of federal help for working class young people. It would slash that funding, if you could believe it, at a time when so many young people are struggling to figure out how they're going to go to college, these guys want to cut Pell Grants by a hundred billion dollars. They want to cut housing assistance all over this country. You're a young person. You think of get, getting an apartment, getting a house. We have millions of people who are spending 40, 50 percent of their limited incomes on housing, they want to cut Section 8 housing and other housing programs by $37 billion. So what this entire proposal is about is to give tax breaks to people who don't need it, and you do that by making massive cuts in education, in health care, in housing, in the programs that working families desperately need. Severs, for our phone. You know, I do. It's, it's interesting. In his opening... Uh, Bernie invoked Robin Hood. And i got to say, I think Bernie fundamentally misunderstood that story. Robin Hood was robbing the tax collectors who were collecting too much taxes from the working men and women and taking it for the rich. In, in Bernie's analogy, it is the Democrats who were King John and the Sheriff of Nottingham. And Robin Hood is saying, tax collectors, stop hammering people who are struggling, who are laboring in the fields, who are working. Stop taking it to the castle to give out to your buddies. You know, this Bernie's going to tell you all this free stuff he's going to give. And the Democrats love corporate welfare. They love to rail on the insurance companies. What they won't tell you is that under Obamacare, the profits for the insurance companies doubled. When you have Washington giving out goodies, the big guys do great. It's the little people who hurt. It's the young people. It's the entrepreneurs. Look, when my dad came to America from Cuba, he couldn't speak English. He was washing dishes. He was making 50 cents an hour. Our economy has been the place where people can come and do that and it doesn't work. You notice, Bernie didn't disagree with what I said, that the gap between rich and poor has increased more under Obama than any president in history. It's increased significantly over the last 40 years under Republican presidents and under... It did increase under Obama, and it did increase under Bush. Under the Bush proposal, 
And remember, what Senator Cruz is talking about, if we give tax breaks, we're going to create all these jobs, we're going to have all this growth, and we're going to have a surplus, and so forth and so on. Under President Bush, he did it. He gave tax breaks, and you know what happened? He gave tax breaks to the rich. And you know what happened? We lost 500,000 private sector jobs, and the national debt almost doubled under Bush. Now, here is the most important point tonight. Really, it has nothing to do with taxes. It has something to do, everything to do, with campaign finance reform. And I want all of you to ask yourself a very simple question. Why do you think the Koch brothers and Ted Cruz's major donors, billionaires, are supporting these proposals? Do you think they're staying up nights worrying about working families? Do you think they're worried about kids who can't afford to go to college? Do you think they're worried about elderly people who can't keep their homes warm in the wintertime? They are not. you got one group of people, the Koch brothers, two people, worth over $95 billion dollars. They are going to spend $300 million alone in this campaign cycle to do what? To pass legislation that protects the interests of the wealthy and the powerful and to support candidates like Senator Cruz who will do just that. So when you think about politics, always ask the question, who is behind this agenda? There was an article, front page, Boston Globe the other day. It said, the Koch brothers want this tax reform. And you know what the article said? And Ted actually, I think, was at a meeting with the Koch brothers the other day, remember? Indeed. Yes. <laughs> and the, what, you may have heard this guy say, if you don't get your act together for the billionaire class, you know what they're going to do? They're going to cut your funding, Ted. You're going to be in trouble. So we used to think that what Congress was about is representing the middle class and working families of the country. Unfortunately, as a result of Citizens United, we have a corrupt campaign finance system. What this legislation is about is not for the working families of this country, no matter what. Senator Cruz may say, this legislation is about is to benefit the wealthy and the powerful and those who make large campaign contributions. Senator Cruz, I want to give you a chance to respond, and then I do want to get to another uh, citizen. You know, there's a pattern you see of Democrats, which is they try to scaremonger, and so their latest villain uh, is the Koch brothers, and they say this money in politics is what it's all about. But, you know, John Adams said, facts are stubborn things. Here's some facts. You look at 2014, and 2014 of the top 20 groups that gave money to politics, I guess listening to Bernie, they were all Republican. No, that's not the case. 16 of the top 20 gave primarily to Democrats. The top six act blue. Tom Steyer, the Carpenters and Joiners Union, the City of New York, the Democratic Governors Association, the NEA, gave almost exclusively to Democrats. Where did these mysterious Koch brothers fall on the list? Number 59. Oh. So, so, so they do a good job. <laughs> Democrats do great with rich people. In the last eight years under Obama, rich people got richer. You know, the most stunning thing Bernie said is, gosh, Republicans don't care about young people or old people or people struggling. That is malarkey, Bernie. And the young people aren't able to get jobs. The people like my dad, the struggling immigrants washing dishes, have lost their jobs because of the taxes and regulations from Obama. And you're proposing more taxes, more regulation, without acknowledging no, what we're doing. I don't think that's why they lost their jobs. They lost their jobs because, among other things, we have a corporate world who are prepared to shut down tens of thousands of factories in this country to move to China, to move to Mexico, to move to other low-wage countries. So if you raise their taxes, they do more than that. Believe me, their taxes right now, you made a statement a moment ago about how highly taxed corporations are. We have the highest corporate taxes in the world. Is that what you said? That's, well, that's, that's wrong. In the world. In the developed world, well, it's wrong. Nominally, it's 35%. But in effective tax rates, it is 14%. Very few global corporations pay 35%. According to the GAO, the average tax rate is about 14%, which puts us in the middle of the global economy. Bottom line here, though, is we're paying this way. We need to create millions of decent paying jobs. And the American people are going to have to make a choice. Do you want to give $1.9 trillion in tax breaks to the top 1%, or do you think it makes more sense to invest a trillion dollars rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure our roads, our bridges, our wastewater plants, our water systems. And doing that, we can create 15 million jobs.